The last time we saw this thing in a video, I promised you guys that we would do some printed heat transfer vinyl on some hats, so that's what we're doing today. So we're back with the Stalls 360 IQ hat heat press. I've been putting this thing through the ringer since it showed up here, and I gotta say, Everything that I had to say in the initial unboxing video and the first test of it 100% holds up. This thing is a monster of a press and it's easily one of my favorite pieces of equipment that I have now. There's also a link for you to check it out in the description below. I've run pretty much everything through this thing at this point, but the one thing I haven't tried yet is the printable heat transfer vinyl. And I've got a job coming up to do some hats where I think printable heat transfer vinyl is gonna be the best option to decorate them. So rather than use that job to test things out because I don't really feel good about that, I'm gonna do some pre-testing, make a couple things for myself today, and we'll show you how that goes. Some may be wondering why I would even want to do heat transfer vinyl on hats. Hats are most commonly done with embroidery and well, I've got an embroidery machine sitting right next to me. And the answer is pretty simple. It's that embroidery has its limits. There are certain levels of detail that you just cannot hit with embroidery and understandably so because you're trying to draw something with thread. So certain types of high detail artwork that have a lot of stuff really packed in tight together, a lot of fine lines, a lot of really crazy coloring and stuff going on. It's just not going to happen the way you want it to with embroidery, especially when you put it down to the scale that's going on a hat, which is usually like two and a half, two and a quarter inches tall. I've got two pieces of artwork today that are exactly what I just described. So let's go check those out. So the first one up is the skull design that we have. This one showed up on the front of our Seeker hoodies that we made a while back and is a sticker in the Seeker sticker pack. And to go back to my previous point real quick, I know this one doesn't work well with embroidery because I've tried it and it looked like total shit. There's just way too many little fine line details going on inside this thing for it to work well with embroidery at that size. And then we have my LS38 logo. This is kind of a retro slash chrome version of the logo. Definitely my favorite version to date, but while the basis of this logo is relatively simple and would work well with embroidery and a lot of other decoration methods, this version, however, is not going to work with pretty much any of them because there's so much color going on in this thing. There's like eight or nine colors at least in it. All these crazy gradients and color shifts going on. There's really no effective way to reproduce this other than digitally printing it somehow. I've got to get these things set up and ready to send over to the printer, which is a great time to mention today's video sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community filled with thousands of killer classes to help you learn pretty much any creative skill that you want to know. These designs were both made start to finish in Adobe Illustrator but let's say you're someone who doesn't want to learn how to make the designs. You just want to learn how to apply what we are doing here today. In order to do that, you're still going to need a base amount of Adobe Illustrator skills. You have to learn how to get whatever artwork you're using print ready. You have to learn how to create the offset path behind the artwork. You have to learn how to create the cut line around the artwork for the printer to read. There's a whole lot more to it than just slapping some artwork together, and you can learn all that and more on Skillshare for only 10 bucks a month. And since they're sponsoring today's video, Skillshare is giving away a free trial membership to the first 1,000 of you guys who join up using the link in the description below. So make sure to check that out. I'm a big fan of it. That's how I learned probably like 80% of my Adobe Illustrator skills to this date, and I cannot say enough good things about it. All right, let's go to the printer. So for materials, I'm using two things today. The first is the Stahl Super Tech Opaque. I believe this is their top tier printable heat transfer vinyl. This stuff is mega stretchy and out of heat transfer vinyls, probably the nicest hand feel that I've come across. This stuff has a crazy adhesive that'll stick to pretty much anything you heat apply it to, and they also make a dye blocker version of it for using on pure poly fabrics, sublimated garments, things like that, which is really commonly used on sports jerseys, and it's definitely something I want to touch on in the future for doing some name and numbers on motocross jerseys. That's gonna be a future video, I believe. But let me be very clear because I feel like this is gonna come up if I don't say it. This stuff is not made to go in your desktop printer. This stuff is only formulated to be used with a solvent printer like this. There are materials out there that exist that go in a desktop inkjet printer. I'm gonna tell you right now, save your time, save your money. They are the worst things ever. If you want something that's gonna be like a one or two time use, then sure, but otherwise, it, it, that color is coming off there really quick. If you want properly printed vinyl heat transfers like we're gonna make here today, there are tons of companies out there that offer this service. We do it too, so if you want me to make them for you, I will do it. Just whatever you do, stay away from the desktop printer stuff. Oh yeah, and the other stuff we're using today is the Solutions Mask. These two things are made to go together. The mask is just for the pre-heat press step. You'll see how that all works when we get to it. But if you wanna check either of these things out, I linked both of them down in the description for you. Well, let's get the stuff in the printer and make some cool shit. Those 
prints super clean, which is mostly thanks to the print profile I created for this material a long time ago. The stock one just, it wasn't up to my quality standard. The blacks weren't black enough, the colors weren't vibrant enough and solid enough, so I spent like a whole day with this material and created my own from scratch and well, the proof is in the pudding. Not gonna cut and mask this stuff just yet though because this stuff needs a full hour to gas out before you put that mask on there. And actually, I'm gonna give it two hours. This was an awesome tip that Josh from Stalls gave me recently is that uh, anytime you're cutting something with a full bleed like these images have, that give it a little bit of extra drying time. Otherwise, the edges will kind of curl and lift up which was something I was having issues with before which isn't really a problem. You can kind of get it stuck back down and get the mask on there. It's just, it's just a pain in the ass. So I'm gonna give it two hours. What the hell am I gonna do for for two hours. Wheels. Oh, come on, heal me, you nerds. That's we're using the tried and true Yupon Classic. This is the five panel version of it. As you can see, there's no seam running up the middle. Anytime you're putting heat transfer vinyl on hats and putting the design you know, front and center like this, I always recommend using a five panel. Heat transfer vinyl will work on a six panel and it'll lay itself into that seam no problem, but you end up with kind of like a butt crack running straight up the center of your design. It just, to me, it doesn't look that great. So anytime I'm putting a design front and center like this, I always use a five panel. So that way I have a nice smooth surface to put it onto. So this stuff is kind of a two stage application, but I'm actually gonna do it in three, which is why I'm stoked to be doing it on this thing now. The way that this stuff applies is it goes on anywhere between 280 to 300 degrees, which is awesome because it's a kind of lower temperature application. So it makes it safer to put on a lot of different stuff, but it goes on for five seconds. Then you lift the press, peel off, the the mask, then put it down for another five seconds to finish it off. So those are the two stages, but the third stage is actually a pre-press step I normally do for around three seconds or so, just to remove any moisture out of the hat and to kind of soften the front of the crown to conform better onto the platen before I put the design down on it. And with the old press, normally I'd be kind of just counting this out in my head as I went along, which wasn't that great. So sometimes it might've been a little over, a little under, whatever. At least now with this thing, I can program those three steps in there exactly. So when it hits three seconds on the pre-press, lifts up five seconds, five seconds, it's just gonna auto open every single time and I'm gonna nail my application perfectly throughout every single hat, which is fantastic. So I'm stoked to try this out. First try went pretty good. Definitely having a preset programmed like that made it go so much better. One little issue did come up though. I noticed that the buckram of the hat, which is like the you know, hard crunchy stuff in the front, uh, that started to separate a little bit from the fabric itself, which means it was getting way too hot. And I have the bottom platen set to 290 and the top set to 290, which is obviously way too aggressive. So I'm gonna back down the bottom to like 200, 220 range and should solve that and we'll be good to go. look pretty damn good. I can't believe how vibrant this one stayed. Usually from screen to actual product, you lose a little bit along the way, but this thing looks awesome. And I mean, the skull one, I really had no doubts about that at all. It's killer. And as for the press itself, as soon as I backed down that lower platen heat, everything went completely smooth. I wasn't having that little separation issue going on anymore. I think I printed like, I don't know, six of these things afterwards to kind of just make sure everything was dialed and it's perfect, man. Everything went super smooth. It was way faster, way easier than doing it the old way that I used to do it. And now I've got, you know, a tangible product I can kind of show to clients and stuff to see if this is maybe the route that they want to take. This press just keeps kicking ass though, man. I'm a very hard guy to impress. Those of you who've been here long 
enough, you know that I'm the absolute worst when it comes to picking out the tiniest of flaws in anything, I swear. Like one pube trimmed out of place and I will spot it from across the room. And out of like, I don't know, two or 300 hats that I've run through this press, I've found zero issues, no complaints, literally nothing that I don't like about it, which is really mind blowing to me. I kind of want to go to stalls and line up their entire design team and just run through with the most triumphant of high fives for everybody. And actually, I really want to get a second one of these now. That way I can line up two of them side by side and have one of them loading, one of them printing, and just swap back and forth and rip through hats at warp speed. Again, there's a link to this press down in the description below, and there's a link to, well, literally everything I used in this video today in the description below. So if you want to get the exact same setup, I've got you covered. And if not, you just want someone to make you some of these, I'm your guy. And please, drop a like on this video for me. Subscribe if you haven't already. Ding the frickin' bell. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again in the next one. Every video. And I've chosen two pieces of artwork today. Son of a... I shouldn't get mad when my phone makes that noise. That's a, that's a good phone noise for once. This motherfucker is drifting over here. What the hell is all over my lens? Wheels, will you shut up, man? Come on. He's got his little paw. Shaking the crap out of the door right now.